Okay, right now I'm going to go over the back side of the Algebra 2 review worksheet. First problem was 2x plus 7 equals negative 9. And most of the time when we see a fraction, we try to run away from the problem, but we are just going to tackle it like it's a coefficient. We're going to subtract 7 first. And then we get 2 fifths x equals negative 16. Now in order to get rid of a fractional coefficient like 2 fifths, we multiply by the reciprocal. Now there's other ways to do this problem. You can multiply them all by 5 to get rid of the fraction. It's called fraction buster. We could times both, uh, both sides by 5 and then divide by 2. I like to do less steps, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal 5 halves. They cancel, or they actually equal 1. 2 fifths times 5 halves, so you just get x on this side, and then we have that 2 goes into 16 8 times, so we have 8, negative 8, negative 8 times 5, and that is negative 40. Number 32, 12 equals y divided by negative 4. Remember that y over negative 4 means divide, the opposite of divide is multiply. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4. So y equals negative 48. Number 33, there's two main things going on here. One, we're asked to distribute this fraction 3 fourths. And then we have to know the difference between 3 minus the quantity of 2 minus 5w and negative 3 times the quantity of 2w. This is a totally different problem if it said negative 3 parentheses 2 minus 5w. In this problem here, you would distribute the negative 3 to both sides, but that's not the situation we have. Here we're going to just distribute the negative sign to both sides. So on this side of the equation, we're going to get 3 minus 2 minus 5w. Is it minus? No, I forgot to distribute the negative, so it should be plus 5w. Now we're going to multiply 3 fourths times 8w over 1, and 4 goes into 8 twice, 3 times 2 is 6w, and then 3 fourths times 12 over 1, 4 goes into 12 3 times, 3 times 3 is 9, so minus 9. And we'll combine our like terms on the right side of the equation, 1 plus 5w equals 6w minus 9. And then I'm going to get my variables on one side, minus 5w, minus 5w, and my constants on one side, plus 9, plus 9. You see that they equal 0 here, they equal 0 there, so I get w equals 10, and that's my final answer. Number 34, variables on both sides, so we're going to subtract 6z from both sides of the equation. I get negative 4 equals 11. Is this true? No. Four, negative 4 will never equal 11, so that means these, this equation has no solution. And our shortcut for writing that is a 0 with a line through it. This means the empty set. There is no numbers that actually work. Uh, kind of the notation that we were looking at when we looked at the number system. I want to jump off to the side a little bit, and what if the problem said 6z plus 12 equals 6z plus 12? If we have this, when we subtract 6z from both sides, we get that 12 equals 12. And this is always true, so that means the answer is all real numbers. And that's one of our number systems. We use a double-lined R to represent that. The next problem is an inequality, and we need to remember that the difference between an inequality and an equation is when we divide or multiply by a negative, the sign flips. So in this case, uh, we have negative 2x minus 3 is greater than 13. We're going to add 3 to both sides. 
I get negative 2x is greater than 16. I'm going to divide by negative 2. And since I divided by negative 2, my inequality is going to flip to less than. I get x is less than negative 8. And that on a number line, negative 8, we use an open circle because it's not included in the solutions and less than is shaded to the left. Number 36, identify the slope and the y-intercept. Remember that our slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. The slope is how steep the line is. And the slope is the number in front of the x. So in this case, my slope is the negative 7. And my y-intercept is my 4. So to graph by finding the x and y intercepts, we can find the x intercept by plugging in 0 for y because all of the points on the x axis have a y value of 0. So we get 3x uh, minus, sorry, minus 2 times 0 equals 12, and 3x equals 12. So x is 4, and this is actually the point 4 comma 0. It's on the x-axis, and then when I plug in 0 for x to find the y-intercept, I get negative 2y equals 12, and y equals negative 6, and this is the point 0 comma negative 6. So to graph that, I have a point at 0, negative 6, and I have a point at 4, 0. Now I have two points that make a line. And that's a different method from what we're going to use in number 38, because number 38 is in slope-intercept form. So we're going to do this by identifying my y-intercept as 3 and my slope as negative 1 half. I like to think of slope as a directions. From the y-intercept, this is how you can get to the next point. So I'm starting on my y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is your vertical axis. My y-intercept is 3, and my slope is negative 1. So we're going to go down 1 and to the right 2. And you're going to always see me go to right, or, uh, right for the bottom number and up or down for the top. Because if you end up going down and to the left, down and to the left is negative, negative. It ends up giving you a positive line, and that's not what we have here. We definitely have a negative slope. So we need to go down, down one, and to the left, I'm sorry, to the right two, and then connect our points. And we need to make sure when we are finished graphing, we say our slope is negative. Is my line going down from left to right? Yes, this line is positive, therefore it's going up from left to right. And the last two, graphing the line x equals 4, x equals 4, this is where x equals 4. My question is, isn't x equal 4 here, up at the point 4, 4? Isn't it also 4 here at 4, negative 4? Therefore, this is a vertical line in which all points are equal to 4. If it was y equals 5, we would be graphing positive 5, and it's a horizontal line because all of these points have a y value of 5. Notice that the line crosses the axis of the variable in the equation if there's only one variable. And lastly, we're going to graph y is greater than 3x minus 2. We're going to graph this in slope-intercept form, and then we have to decide whether to use a dashed or a solid line. The dashed lines are for less than or greater than. The solid lines are for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. And then we'll decide which direction to shade in. So according to slope-intercept form, my y-intercept is negative 2. 
and my slope is 3. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1. So up 3 over 1 and connect it with a dashed line because it's just greater than, not greater than or equal to. And now I need to figure out which way to shade. The best thing to do is to take 0, 0 this point and see if it's a solution. So I'm going to plug it in. 0 is greater than 3 times 0 minus 2. 0 is greater than negative 2, which is true. That means 0, 0 is a solution and then all of the points on this side of the line are also solutions. Now, shortcut for that, greater than, as you can see, we just got greater than, it shaded up from the line, and less than shades down from the line. It's always a good idea just to plug in a point to check.